back. Now I'm crazily talking, uh, flicking through the screens, trying to look for Natalie. Ah, yes, Natalie's back in the, in the room as well, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I'm now going to pass over to Natalie, guys, and our speaker today. Um, Natalie, over to you. Let me know when you'd like the presentation to start. Fab. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you could um, just uh, start the presentation. I'm not sure how these things work, whether you can see me or not. But um, like I say, I'm still um, getting getting to grips with Zoom. Um, anyway, way. Thank you for inviting me along to talk today. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit. Well, a lot really about um, what we've been doing for the last 12 months. Um, so 12 months ago. Um, I'm a, well, still am, commercial property lawyer, um, working for myself, doing professional um, legal support work, uh, mum of three, um, and like many people, uh, suffering from a lot of anxiety around what was going on in the world, you know, um, the situation really wasn't great. Um, all my work suddenly fell off a cliff in March, all my contracts were cancelled. And I was suddenly found, uh, you know, faced with the prospect of no work and um, three children at home with a single mum. Um, and then uh, the COVID crisis hit us. And um, I think really what sort of drew me into setting this up uh, alongside a lady called Gabrielle Andrews was that anxiety and that real fe feeling that I needed to be doing something with my time. Um, and that's kind of how I fell into it. It wasn't by design at all. Um, so yeah, uh, almost a year ago, so March the 15th, um, Coronavirus Community Help Taunton came into existence. Um, if you could uh, actually just, sorry, two seconds, because the next one's a news report. Um, so uh, basically we first set up on Facebook um, and we've now got, I think, 13,000 members um, and uh, does what it says on the tin, really. We are a co coronavirus community help group. Um, like I say, primarily Facebook based, um, although later on we went on to Instagram and Twitter. And I've got a couple of news reports, if you don't mind, just to kind of set the scene a little bit and tell you a bit more about us. They're, they're only two minutes each. Um, so if we can just uh, go on to the first slide. Um, a good friend next door. Brenda Lamberton lives by herself, but she's not alone. Thanks to a community effort, she's getting the help she needs. It's the lifeline that we all need, really. The fact that you know somebody is out there and you can call for help if you need it, or if you're running out of something and you know that somebody will go and get it, collect prescriptions for you, even do the odd bit of shopping. So how many leaflets have you done? We've that done. help is coming from Natalie Dyson We've and a team of volunteers. 200. They're among the thousands of locals across the country taking it upon themselves to check in on neighbours. Hi. <laughs> I'll stay at a distance. Yes, yeah, no problem. Bringing supplies or just a chat, or the 900 COVID-19 support groups have sprung up. People have just reached out and said, we can't believe that, you know, people are so kind. Um, thank you so much for getting together and doing this. We were so scared. We were so worried. We didn't know what we were going to do. I just think the government really is um, struggling through this. And without the resources of willing volunteers on the ground um, like us, uh, they're going to struggle to reach those people at the right time. At the Vivory Arms, there's no one in for lunch. They've now started a food bank and doing a takeaway service. We sent out some roast dinners on Sunday. Um, I actually stood in the middle of service in my kitchen and just cried hearing some of the stories that people are living off toast um, or can't get out. People can't visit their families because of it, because they're having to self-isolate. You know, it's people saying they're going day by day we're going hour by hour at the moment to you know just to get by aren't we just to make sure that they're okay and that we're okay while we all distance and isolate 92 year old Bernard tells me this pandemic could bring us closer together in many ways this uh, virus will start to change people's lives for the better they uh, realise that we need to act as a community. We just want you to know that we're here for you. The community effort 
is well underway. Dan White at Sky News in Taunton. I still well up seeing uh, seeing um, uh, the people in that film. <laughs> um, okay, this is from ITV News a little bit later, a couple of months later. There are many ingredients that make up a successful community coronavirus response. Goodwill is perhaps the key. Their catering company currently closed. Jackie and Ed Cullen are keeping their skills sharp, making and delivering free meals. Hi, Jean. You OK? Hey. There's a nice hot meal for you there, my darling. It may be about food, but the service is also social. Are you OK? Lovely. Oh, good. Thank you. Enjoy. 91-year-old Jean is grateful for these socially distanced get-togethers. I've been confined, so I've relied on people ringing me up or popping in to see me. Dropping the meal is one thing, but actually having a two-minute chat with them, asking them how they are, how the day is, it's a big difference and they're really enjoying it. Michelle struggled since her son died a couple of years ago. When COVID hit, she was surviving with a few pennies to her name and dry cereal to eat. The community team stepped in and she's now volunteering herself. I didn't want to ask for help. I'm quite a proud person. Like everything that's in my house, I, I bought in things. And, but it kind of got that horrible stage. I had nothing, absolutely nothing. 1,000 people in the area are sewing scrubs for NHS staff, which are being delivered by a local driving school. Prescriptions are being collected for those that can't get there themselves. Um, do you know who the coordinator is? Online or over the phone, okay. Natalie Dyson is coordinating a small Somerset army. Taking pets to vets, um, uh, putting money on electricity and gas meters, you know, you name it, we're there really. And, and we're set up really to respond at a local level, whatever the request may be. Ditching their uniform for fancy dress, posties are raising money, goodwill and a desire to help. The ingredients for a first-class community response. Rupert Evelyn, ITV News, Taunton. Can you move on to the next slide? Any Great. So um, hopefully that's given you a little bit of a flavour about our groups. Um, you know, really, really diverse um, set of groups, um, and we set up uh, forty local area subgroups. Uh, these are these are the subgroups that we set up, essentially covering a large part of the um, Somerset West and Taunton area. Um, and on each group, there was at least one, if not um, two or three co local area coordinators who all um, coordinated the volunteers. Um, I think we had, a, I, I'm never quite sure because we never actually counted all of them, but it was just under a thousand, uh, certainly that um, across those groups um, that dropped in and out to help as volunteers um, over the course of the last 12 months. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so initially we were a Facebook based group and still are a Facebook based group. Um, that's the, the group address there. Um, and we realised actually that um, in order to access the help, not everybody was on Facebook. So we had to come up with other ways. Um, we created our own um, helpline number and, and we were really quick to react and we were set up well before Somerset County Council um, got their acting to go, I think about four weeks before they were. Um, so we had a, um, a helpline number and people who manned the helpline. Um, we also set up our own website, um, a chap called Tim Finch and um, Alan Jones, they kindly gave up their time to help us set that up and that's still operational at the moment. Um, next slide please. But obviously, um, we also had to hit the younger population as well because, you know, this crisis didn't just impact old people um, and people that were shielding. You know, it also really impacted people in, from all different walks of life, the young, um, you know, people with mental health issues. Um, and we really wanted to find other ways of getting to them. So we um, went on to Instagram and we went on to Twitter too. Um, and we had the help of the fabulous local um, intro tweet. Um, and I have to say, um, you know, I am not a technical person by any stretch of the imagination. I really struggle with Zoom, but I learned so much from working alongside these guys. Um, and it really enabled us not just um, for people to contact us, 
but for us to share some really positive and uplifting stories that we had um, across our groups. Um, so for instance, you'll see little um, Jasmine Pollard um, there who was frantically making um, key worker key rings um, and the Taunton scrubbers who I'm sure you all have heard of making scrubs um, for people in the hospital. Um, and then we have the wonderful Debbie Turley, who is a vicar in um, Priorswood, I believe, who would dress up as a purple dinosaur and walk around the streets entertaining people. Um, so we really wanted to try and kind of drag out some of the funny and um, positive things that were happening in the community and share them with people, as well as being a source of um, official advice, government information, uh, information from the NHS, local GP practices. Um, the local NHS Trust um, and both councils. Um, so we were quite a diverse group, really. Uh, next slide, please. Um, sorry. Um, so <laughs> in the first two weeks of lockdown, uh, we estimate that we delivered around 60,000 leaflets across the area. Um, these were printed out free of charge by Zero Links Print in Norton Fitzwarren, um, which were absolutely blown away by their support. Um, and like I say, over a thousand volunteers stepped up to help um, across these 40 local area groups. Um, and we've got 13,000 mem members on the Taunton Facebook group, but actually there are many hundreds, if not a couple of thousand more across the local area subgroups. And I thought it'd just be nice for you, rather than to bore you to tears with um, text-based slides, just to give you a little bit of a flavour as to um, who the people are that went out there and um, handed out these leaflets. So you can see that people were getting all of their family involved, um, even the dog. <laughs> um, and essentially the, um, the jobs that they were doing, I mean, no job was too strange, really. Um, if we could just move on to the next slide. Uh, we had um, obviously requests for shopping, requests for prescription collection, um, we were running errands, we were delivering letters, we were walking dogs, um, we banked checks, we collected pensions, um, we did friendly phone calls, uh, and like I say, alongside all of that, we were also as an admin group um, pumping out a, a kind of as an official hub lots of this official information um, and lots of positive news stories. Um, you know, for instance, a care home, in fact, recently once put out a request for, a, for an elderly resident to have birthday, a birthday card. You know, we did things like asking people to, um, you know, send Easter cards to care homes and, and those sorts of things. So it's a really diverse range of services that we provided. Um, all of us were volunteers, you know, ordinary, everyday people. None of us had done anything like this before. I mean, I certainly hadn't. And it was a real eye opener for me. You know, we had to take into account all sorts of things like safeguarding, um, ID, um, data protection, GDPR, um, you know, the mental health awareness, training, health and safety. It was just kind of mind blowing. Um, we did have the help um, from Spark Somerset with things like uh, ID and DBS checks um, and the lovely Beth Anton, who I'm sure you all know from Taunton Chamber of Commerce, helped us with the, um, the ID cards. Um, but it was a complete baptism of fire. And, um, you know, I, I kind of look back now and I can't really believe that I've been through it all and we've been through it all and what was going on at the time. But anyway, here's just a, a couple of people, you know, some of the people that we helped. There's my daughter there, Eleanor. Uh, delivering a food parcel uh, and the lovely um, uh, Roland there getting his milk. Um, and and the, the photo on the bottom right just goes to show, you know, the level of anxiety at that time. Um, when we were taking the, the food to people, you know, they would be delivering the money to us with these sticks because they, nobody knew, you know, how the virus was transmitted. Um, yeah, so it was it was unbelievable, very, very rewarding, but um, lots Sorry. of work. Um, yeah, and one thing I should say as well, you know, we had a real issue the first um, first couple of weeks we were set up with um, scammers trying to get onto our group and trying to get registered as volunteers, and we had to get the police involved and all sorts. So it was a really tricky um, and testing time. 
Um, but we estimate that we've um, answered over 20,000 calls for help since lockdown, the first lockdown began, which is um, quite some feat, I think. <laughs> um, okay, if we can move on to the next slide. And um, Sarah, I think, is here somewhere from Sydney. Um, I had the, the pleasure of working with Sarah and, and a team of people, um, as well as Sally Maidman from Design Bean. Um, a team of people, we um, decided that, you know, nobody knew basically where anybody could get any food from. And all of the supermarket shelves, you'll remember, were completely empty and everybody is running around like headless chickens. So um, we took it upon ourselves to pull a project team together and we um, found out exactly which food places were open, who was delivering, how we could get it delivered. And um, Sarah pulled together this online um, simplysig.shop, which I think is still operational, is it Sarah? Okay, um, no, I think it comes down. I know the domain's run out now. Yeah. Um, so if it is still there, it is due to come down shortly yeah. next year. Yeah, but it was, I mean, this was a lifeline for so many people because they were able to go and very quickly find out, you know, if you wanted meat, where which butchers you could um, have uh, meat delivered from, or if you wanted bread, which bakers were there. Um, and we also pulled together a PDF version of that, which um, uh, Design Bin pulled that together for us. And people found that really useful. Um, next slide, please. So not content with that, we decided there weren't quite enough shops, especially in my local area. Um, so we set up a pop-up pop shop. <laughs> um, and uh, you couldn't get flour for uh, love and money at that time, but we actually managed to have a source of flour at all times. So there were queues, you know, right out the door for, um, for the, the flour from Wilton and Sherford Community Shop. Uh, the shop ran for about two months, and um, if you listen to the lovely Fran, our mayor, she virtually opened it. I am very pleased to open the Wilton and Sherford Community Shop. I am sure this initiative by a group of local volunteers will be very welcomed by the community, enabling people to be able to buy essential items locally. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the volunteers for giving their time and putting in all the effort to get the shop open so quickly. Well done and safe shopping. So there's just a, a few photos there. If you just move on to the next slide. Um, you can see the lovely Izzy from um, Izzy Stockton Bridal in there um, serving a customer. Um, and at and T, I I think, Refrigeration, they donated a um, chiller, chiller cabinets. Um, we'd also really like to thank Albert Goodman, who stepped up and helped, helped us set up the Community Interest Company and Barclays, who are our bankers. Um, so, uh, some of the other things that we got involved with, like I say, very diverse. Um, we supported lots of the other groups that were set up in Taunton, like the Taunton Scrubbers, um, when they put out appeals for things like fabric and buttons. Um, uh, we also uh, supported various, uh, you know, like the cottage industry that sprang up, um, people making PPE. So we were a great hub and, and a very good means of advertising very quickly to try and get help and support. Um, we had ladies who were knitting hearts. I say ladies, that's terribly sexist. Maybe there were some gentlemen knitting them too, I'm not sure. Um, and these wonderful teddy bears for the hospital. Um, and we collected lots of cosmetics for the, for the nurses and doctors because of course everyone was frantically washing their hands the whole time um, and they were all suffering with you know, chapped hands. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, what else did we do? So we set up our own food bank uh, and we set up a pet food bank um, and people donated at two points, um, St Michael's Church and also the Link Centre in Holken. Um, and we distributed this um, and we also it became quite clear that some people who were receiving what they call the Boris boxes, but these government food parcels um, they didn't necessarily want, wanted somewhere to donate them on. So we worked alongside the food bank and we took the donations in and we made sure that they got to the people that did need them. And also, you know, the dogs and cats and pets too, they didn't get forgotten. And actually, as a result of doing that, I stepped up to, um, to become a trustee at St Giles Animal Rescue. So that was really quite nice that that gave me the opportunity to do that. Uh, next slide, please. 
Um, we did things for the kids as well. We ran an Easter egg competition um, and I was absolutely bowled away by, um, by some of these entries. Just amazing. My own favourite was, um, was uh, Lockdown Mum, uh, bottom right, which I thought I'd have to share with all of you with her Vogue and um, little gin bottle there. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. Uh, we had a um, barbecue uh, for NHS workers down at Musgrove Park Hospital and we all got dressed up uh, on the day um, and the community really uh, stepped up um, and you know they donated um, money towards um, the food so that was all free um, and we I had a lovely letter from the, um, the chief exec um, thanking the whole community and it, he said that it really really lifted spirits but it was very difficult at that time you know trying to, to sort of police that we had some old army veterans in there trying to enforce social distancing which was fun. Um, next slide please. I think it's just a few more photos. Uh, there you go, there's some of the staff enjoying their barbecue and the lovely Ed Cullen, Ed and Jackie Cullen. Um, what else did we do? Uh, we uh, developed a sideline in finding lost things. Um, it seems that social media has lots of different uses and who knew that um, our community groups would be so uh, successful at finding things like soft toys, bracelets, keys, uh, not to mention a tortoise, a rabbit, millions of dogs and cats and even a missing elderly gentleman. Um, so we're really rather proud of our um, track record in that regard. Uh, next slide please. Uh, in June when the kids were going back to school um, I had a couple of schools that were asking um, did anyone know if there were any gazebos going and what started as one or two schools requesting snowballed out of all proportion and um, before we knew it uh, we needed 65 of them and I thought that's rather a tall order but actually we managed to achieve it. Um, you know, members of the community again coming forward donating money or donating gazebos either directly to the schools or on loan. Um, so that was rather a fun spreadsheet to try and police. Um, but the idea being that um, the transmission rates of the virus are much um, lower outside, so it's much safer for the children to be out there um, under the gazebo. Okay, next slide please. Um, so we also, uh, in October half term, we pulled together a list of all the local um, food places that were helping out um, and offering free, uh, free school meals and we raised over £2,000 from the local community. Um, next slide please. And then in December, again the community stepped forward and we managed to um, uh, have enough donations um, to do food parcels and Christmas presents for which were wrapped uh, so a, an army of ladies wrapping presents um, to, for over 300 um, disadvantaged children from 13 different schools. Uh, next slide please. Um, and all this is not down to one person. Um, I know that I'm kind of the face of the organisation but there is a huge army of people working away behind me and um, I, I couldn't have done this, we couldn't have done this, um, you know, without that huge army of people. So, um, you know, we have an awful lot of people to thank. Um, and I'm very fortunate to have an amazing admin team, I can't mention them all, and the super hardworking coordinators and all of the volunteers. Uh, next slide please. So quite rightly, um, you know, they did receive uh, thanks. Um, Simon Clifford from Somerset County Council contacted me, he's very senior there, to let us know that the county hall was going to be lit up in various different colours to acknowledge the work of our groups. Uh, that's my daughter holding a card from the Lord Lieutenant of Somerset. There's uh, little Jasmine making all um, key worker badges for us. And this was awful. I had to sit in a room with Somerset County Cricket uh, players and right, um, we were sending out thank you cards to our volunteers, which was obviously really awful for me. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we were even commemorated by local artist Jo Holdaway um, in her Unsung Heroes um, collection, which I think was rather nice. Um, so just a nod to the work that volunteers have done during the, the pandemic. Uh, next slide, please. 
And I have four slides, I'm afraid. I'm not going to go through all of these, but these are just some, I think, and I'm sure that I've missed people out, so I'm terribly sorry. 